Hello and welcome to another exciting Maya Q&A. This week's community question comes from Esam Abdullah Al Hanbali, and sorry because I'm probably butchering your name right there. When using HDR or EXR as a source of indirect illumination, the blue color of the sky illuminates the scene with blue. The entire scene looks bluish, which is not natural. It isn't physically plausible. In real life, we don't have blue on the ground and buildings. So I'll start off with a simple scene with Franklin, who have replaced all his textures with the default Lambert shader from Maya. And I have an Arnold Skydome light with a high dynamic range image. So what I can see is that there are two main light sources in my scene. One yellow from the sunlight and another which is blue from the indirect illumination of the light being bounced around the sky dome. The Lambert shader is 50% grey and by itself it allows a lot of light to bounce off its surface and that's why we can see these colours very clearly flooding the whole scene. The colours are bleeding into Franklin's textures. However, if I choose the ground plane and right click on it and choose add a new material, I'll select an AI standard shader. Now I'm going to go a little bit crazy here and choose the brightest magenta that I can find and the light from the sky will now bounce on the ground, absorb the colour and reflect back the magenta onto Franklin. So my first question is, are the shaders in your scene detailed enough that they correct the initial colour bleed? If you're following a PBR workflow, the textures from the objects around your scene will react in ways that make your scene seem more realistic. So I could have a dry concrete shader that would absorb the colour from the sky and reflect back a more realistic tone onto Franklin. So the objects in the environment will affect the colouring that is in your scene. Now I'm going to go in the opposite direction and use Color Bleed to help me stylize my scene. If I open my Outliner and go to Windows, Outliner, I've hidden two cubes here with an emissive texture, which I can now reveal by pressing Shift H on my keyboard. This big red block will spill color onto Franklin, removing the blue from the sky. So if you imagine that he's next to a red car, there would be some reflection of this color from the environment going into Franklin's shader. Of course, I can go ahead and select the cube and go into the Arnold tab in the attribute editor and choose to turn off its primary visibility. So the color bleed will remain while I've hidden the actual object from the render. Let me unhide my second cube now, which is going to produce a blue spill that we'll be able to see on his right hand side. So the way that we balance all of these colors bouncing around the scene is by having control over the intensity of each light. If I take the sky dome light now and reduce its intensity to 0.2, the colors from the sky dome are now greatly reduced and we can see the effect of the emissive textures much better. Now it looks like Franklin's on the top of a roof somewhere near some neon lights. Something I always do with my renders, which also helps reduce any unwanted color bleeding, is to add some backlights. So I'm going to go into Arnold, Lights, and choose an area light. And then I'll scale it up so it's nice and large in my scene, and position it above him, and I'll turn on the exposure really high, as I find it easier to reduce an overexposed light than trying to gauge if it's in my scene or not. And now you can see that I've added even more spill into the scene. So I'm going to make sure that I position this light parallel with the ground and I'm going to change its color slightly so it's a little bit darker and I'll reduce the exposure as well just to tone the effect down. So I'll end up with a nice rim over his shoulder. I'll then duplicate the light to add another rim to the left hand side and I'll be careful not to put my light behind the red cube occluding the light. I'll change the color to a red color and reduce the spread of it to about 0.12. So the highlight is a little bit harder on the edge and then I'm going to dial down the exposure as usual until I find a look that I'm happy with. So when lighting a scene with an HDR image, it's like lighting in the real world. You have the light from the time of day you're filming in and any artistic lights you brought along with you to the shoot. With these colored lights, we are subduing the effect of the indirect illumination from the sky. And although this is an extreme example, you can see that we've ended up with a very moody scene. But there's one thing that's still missing in this mix, and that is Franklin's skin shaders. 
So I'm going to turn Franklin's shaders back on without changing any of the lights in my scene. So now you can see how the texture maps add control to which colors are absorbed and which are reflected. Well, if we left everything with the standard Lambert shader, there's a lot more light bouncing around and we get a lot more color bleed. So while in reality there is a little bit of blue light, which is noticeable, especially in shaded areas, there is so much other color information around us that it's not as prominent as in your initial renders inside of Maya. Thanks to Sam for his question and to you for watching until the end of the video. Stay tuned to the channel because next week, with Black Friday, I'll be putting one of my classes for sale and I'll be sharing a discount code with all of you lovely people on YouTube as a thank you. Remember to like, subscribe and push the bell button to receive notifications of when I'm releasing my latest videos. And thank you all for watching and as always, keep learning, stay strong and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye!